And welcome to Sanford Flip Math. Uh, we are working on AP Calculus. Uh, this is, uh, we are working from the Finney Demana Waits Kennedy book, third edition uh, calculus for AP Calc. Uh, we are in section 4.1, which is about the extreme value theorem. And uh, the purpose of this video is not really to lay groundwork. We did more of that in the first half uh, of 4.1. This is really just for examples. So a uh, quick little uh, recap again of the process uh, to find extreme values. Uh, maximums or minimums. Uh, what we are going to do is find critical points. Again, that's where the derivative is equal to zero or maybe the derivative does not exist. And we're going to find endpoints and we're just going to compare those values and describe. The extreme value theorem says that if we are on a closed interval where the function is continuous, that's the condition, those are the conditions, then there is a maximum and there is a minimum and uh, that doesn't say how to find them but this, uh, that's where the critical values come in, critical points come in, and endpoints, okay? All right, so here we go. Uh, so we're going to go ahead and find critical points first. So critical points, again, are where the y, where y prime either doesn't exist or where it is uh, equal to zero. So let's find y prime. Now, probably worth noting that this is the same thing as x to the negative 1 plus the natural log of x. Okay, so the, the derivative of x to the negative 1 is going to be negative 1 x to the negative 2 and the derivative of the natural log of x is just 1 over x times the derivative of the inside, which is, the derivative of the inside is really just uh, 1, so that's not very exciting. So negative 1 over x squared plus 1 over x. Now, what we need to do is we want to find out where this is equal to 0. Well, this is equal to 0. Well, let's, let's just go ahead and solve it. Now, I'm going to multiply both sides by the least common denominator. Remember, the least common denominator has to have all of the all the factors of all of the denominators, so it has to have two factors of x. Uh, and if it has two factors of x, then it already has one. And I'm just going to distribute this uh, across the left side of this equation. So I end up with negative 1 uh, plus x equals, well, 0 times who cares is 0. Okay? All right, and then uh, solving this, well, x equals 1. Okay, so that's where uh, the derivative is equal to 0. Okay, so the critical point here, uh, well, the critical point that I've identified is that one something. Uh, it'd be nice to know what that one something is. Okay, so we're going to take that one and put it into here. And so f of 1, so I can get y. Uh, is going to 1 over 1 plus the natural log of 1. Okay, now I, I can't, I don't have time to go back and review all of pre-calculus and algebra 2, but the natural log of 1 is 0. The quick reason is, is because it's asking e to what power is 1, and e to the 0 is 1. So the x1 is 0, so that's the natural log. 1 plus 0 is 1. Okay? Now, there are a couple endpoint values that we're given. Okay, so let's put in f of 0.5, so that's going to be 1 over 0.5 plus the natural log, whoops, sorry, it's kicked into limit for some reason, the natural log of 0.5, well that's 2 plus, 1 over 1 half is 2, and then the natural log of 0.5, we're grabbing my calculator, is negative 0.693-ish plus the 2, sorry, 1, 1.3068, etc. Okay. Okay, so that's one of the ordered pairs. That's at an end point. Okay, and then we need to do also f of 4, which is going to be uh, 1 over 4 plus the natural log of 4. So 0.25 plus the natural log of 4, which is 1.63629, blah, blah, blah. Okay, so that's another ordered pair. Okay, so 4, 1.63629. 6, sorry, 2, 9. Okay, so now the question is, what are the extremes? Well, we have a maximum 
of 1.636 and it's located at x equals 4. I have a minimum of 1 and it's located at x equals 1. Okay, so uh, again, all I did was find critical points. Now, uh, a quick little note here, that, and, and this is something I just missed. Okay, um, Remember, another critical point would be anywhere the derivative does not exist. Okay, So if, if y prime does not exist, that could be a critical point also. Well, anywhere that the denominator would equal 0, that would be a place where the derivative doesn't exist. Okay, now, so the, the denominator of this derivative is just x or x squared, so that would only be at x equals 0. Okay, so now we need to consider what happens at x equals 0. Well, remember, x equals 0 is actually not in our interval, okay, but I want to make sure we consider it. So, so we don't have to now because I know it's not in the interval. Okay, so uh, long story long, this is it, okay? So again, this is this is straight out of your calc book. I think it was number 11. It was up there at the top of the screen, okay? All right, so that that's that's that one, okay? Okay. Next up, uh, we're going to do number 24, and uh, same same kind of thing. We're going to find critical points, and also find endpoints if there are any and uh, if there are endpoints now, uh, and and then do some comparing. Okay, so let's go ahead and look at y prime first. Okay, well, in order to do y prime, uh, y, I'm going to look at y is x squared minus 4 to the negative 1. Now, you could do a quotient rule on this. I just think this is going to be easier. Okay, so I'm going to do a power rule. And when I do the power rule, it's also a chain rule. Okay, so this is going to be negative 1 times the same inside, subtract 1 from the exponent, times the derivative from, of, from the inside. Okay, remember, keep the inside first the same, and then, okay, so same inside, and then the derivative of the inside. Okay, so that's a quick little review. All right, so this is the same thing as negative 1 times 2x, so negative 2x over x squared minus 4 squared. Okay, now, critical points happen, again, where this is equal to 0. Okay, so we're going to find out where the derivative is equal to 0. I'm going to multiply both sides by the denominator. So I have negative 2x equals 0. Okay, again, for those visual folk, multiply on both sides by x squared minus 4 squared. And uh, so this divides out, and then I'm left with 0 times that. Okay, so x equals 0. Okay, so one point I need to consider is when x equals 0. Okay. Okay. Critical points also happen when the derivative doesn't exist. Well, remember the derivative is. I'm just going to rewrite it because it's kind of messy. All right. What's going on? There it is. Sorry. Okay. Anywhere where the denominator equals zero, that's a problem. Okay. So x squared minus 4 will equal 0 when x squared equals 4, when x equals positive or negative 2. So those are potential critical points also. Okay. There are no endpoints uh, that are stated in the problem, so we're just going to work with what we have. So at this point, what I need to do is substitute values. Okay. So I'm, I'm looking for y values now. So I'm going to put 0 into the original equation, and this ends up being negative 1 fourth. I'm going to put negative 2 into the original equation. Well, negative 2 squared is 4, 4 minus 4. So this is really undefined. Well, I, that's not a maximum, that's not a minimum, that's not even a value. Okay, and then if I put in 2, again, same idea. Okay, so the only value I see on here that, that is a max or a min is 0, negative 1 fourth. So now the problem is, is that I don't know what that is. I don't know if it's a max or a min. Well, for right now, what we're going to do is uh, I could put in other y values to check. 
especially other y values nearby, like maybe 1. That would be a good, good one to put in. Uh, so I already know uh, x and y, uh, 0, negative 1 fourth. If I put in negative 1 and 1, well, okay, so put 1 in here. 1 squared is 1 minus 4 is negative 3, so that would be negative 1 third. And the same for 1 would be negative 1 third. Well, if we, I'm going to do just a little quick sketch by hand here. 2 and negative 2 are vertical asymptotes because they make the denominator 0. Um, at 0, negative 1 fourth, negative 1 third on either side of it. So th this graph is going to look something like this. You can graph it in your calculator, but that's going to be it. Okay, so what I have is a local maximum of uh, negative 1 fourth, and it is located at x equals 0. Again, no endpoints to check. I didn't have other values to compare to. Uh, so what I did was looked at some x values uh, nearby that x value. I know I can't have any other maximums or minimums. They're only going to happen at critical points or at endpoints. So that was pretty much it. Okay. All right. So two down. We're going to do one more example. Okay. And here it is. Sorry, I'm a little saved there. Um, now, this is going to be a lot of fun to graph. Not really. Um, really, what's going on, though, is I, I can do most of this probably without graphing. And, and what's going on is, again, critical points still happen where y prime equals 0. Well, y prime, or f prime, as it were, uh, f prime is piecewise, just like the just like the function itself is. So I'm going to have an f prime that equals the derivative of this. Okay, so the derivative of 3 is 0, derivative of negative x is negative 1. And that's true for x values that are less than 0. I'm also going to have an f prime. I mean, I guess I actually, that's what I should do. Uh, watch this. Okay, sorry. f prime equals. Okay, and then I'm going to do this one now. So derivative of 3 is 0, derivative of 2x is 2, derivative of negative x squared is negative 2x. The only catch here is that I need to be a little careful about at x equals 0 itself. Um, the only way it even has a derivative at x equals 0 is if the derivative from each of these matches at 0. Okay, so for instance, if, if I actually take 0 and put it in here, that derivative, well, f prime of 0 from that little piece would be negative 1. And then if I go to the other part, f prime of 0 from that piece would be 2. They don't match. So there is no, so in other words, f prime of 0 does not exist. So this would have been a right-hand derivative, and the other one would have been a left-hand derivative because it was about to the left of 0, and the other one was about to the right of 0. Okay, so moral of the story, f prime of 0 is a critical point. I'm sorry, x equals 0 is a critical point because the derivative does not exist. Okay. Other places that the derivative, so we need to also look at where the derivative is equal to 0. Okay, and so derivative is equal to 0, well, Negative 1 is never going to equal 0. But 2 minus 2x might equal 0. So 2 equals 2x, x equals 1. Now, this, this rule would only be good if the x value is greater than 0. And it is. Okay, so that's the other one I have to consider. Okay, and I don't have any other endpoints on here. The only uh, other issues with this were the spot where uh, the function changes. Okay, so let's put in 0. Now, again, you have to follow the rules. Okay, so this particular one says that if I'm doing 0, I have to, well, not that one. Pay attention, Mr. Sanford. If I'm doing 0, I have to follow this rule. Okay, so if I put in 0, it ends up being just 3. Okay. If I put in 1, 
then I still have to follow this rule. <laughs> That's weird that it went behind there. <laughs> it's all good. All right, so uh, to, do the, to do the 1 there, I'm going to do uh, 3 plus 2 times 1 minus 1 squared. Okay, so that's 4. Okay, so, so based on this, now there, there could be a little discontinuity there. Yeah, there is a discontinuity there, so, so I need to be a little careful here. Oh, there isn't a discontinuity. All right, I don't know, you're probably not seeing what I'm seeing. Sorry. If I put in 0 here, which is what I did, then f of 0 is 3. If I put in 0 here, even though I'm not really supposed to, Oh, 3 minus 0 is 3 also. So th it is continuous there. Okay, I think when we're done with this, we'll do a little graph just, just so we have something to compare with. Based on the information I see here, it looks to me like we have a maximum of 4 at x equals 1, and we have a minimum of 3 at x equals 0. Okay, let's, we're going to take a quick look at the graph. Okay, so I just recopied the function so that we kind of see what's going on. Uh, so this, this guy starts at 0 uh, on the x value 0 and has a y value of 3 there. And the slope is negative 1. It's going to look something like that. Okay, And then the other one, uh, playing around with this, uh, you can figure out that the vertex of that parabola is actually at 1, 4. So if I go up to 1, 4 and it opens down. So this side looks like this, and this side looks like this. And remember, this starts right here. So it does connect up. And so now the question I have is, does it make sense now to say that I have a maximum here? And does it make sense to say that I have a minimum here? Even though the derivative, okay, the derivative here uh, did not exist because it's a cusp. And then the other one, uh, the derivative was 0. Okay. Well, that wraps it up. Uh, again, the whole idea here was just to look at examples, uh, just a, a, a speedy recap uh, to find extreme values, find maximums or minimums, find the critical points. Critical points, again, are where the derivative is equal to 0, where the derivative does not exist. If you are looking on a closed interval that is, uh, is continuous or, or even not continuous, then you need to find the endpoints uh, in then you can do some comparing of y values. All right? Bye.